So unit five is radical expressions and equations, and 5.1 is working with radicals on pages 272 to 281. Our curriculum outcome today is to expand and demonstrate understanding of radicals with numerical and variable radicands, including computations and solving equations. And we're gonna be limited to square roots and one or two radicals. And our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to write a radical in both mixed and entire form. Number two, to be able to identify the restrictions on a radical expression. Number three, to be able to compare radicals. And number four, to be able to add and subtract radicals. So an entire radical is one that has not yet been simplified, while a mixed radical is one that has been simplified. And remember that a radical that has been simplified is one in which there are no more perfect squares or perfect cubes, depending on the type of root that you're taking, under the radical sign. So here's our example. It says write the following as mixed radicals. So we have the square root of 63 x to 7 y to the 8th. Well, the way that we do this is we try and break each of these things up into things that are perfect squares. Um, so 63 can be broken up to 9 times 7, because 9 is a perfect square. x to the 7 can be broken up to x to the 6th times x. Um, x to the 6th is a perfect square because 6 is divisible by 2, which is like the type of root that we're using here. And y to the 8th, which is um, a perfect square already because you can um, take half of 8. So when we're all said and done, we take the square root of the things we can take the square root of, and we leave whatever else that we can't take the square root of, we leave it underneath the radicand. So we end up with the 3, because you can take the square root of 9. You can take the square root of x to the 6th, which is just x cubed. And you can take the square root of y to the 8th, which is just y to the 4th. And what we have left is just 7 and x. So this is an entire radical, and this is a mixed radical. Now, if we're talking about uh, the cube root, then we need to take out some perfect cubes. So you need to know what the perfect cube of 54 is, or if there's a, a perfect cube that goes into 54, and there is, it's 27. So that leaves you with 27 times two. A to the 10th power now, we're looking for things that are divisible by three. So that's gonna be A to the 9th times A. B to the fourth is gonna be B cubed times B. And C to the eighth power is gonna be C to the sixth power times C squared. So you need to know your exponent rules as well to be able to understand that a to the 10th power can be broken up into a to the 9th power times a. So now we take the cube root of things that we can take the cube root of. The cube root of 27 is three. Cube root of a to the 9th power is a cubed. Cube root of b cubed is just b. And the cube root of c to the 6th power is c squared. And what we have left is, um, we've taken the square uh, cube root of 27, that, that, and that. So we're left with two, a, B, and C squared underneath that root sign. So our next example says we're going to write the following as entire radicals and then order them from least to greatest. So we've got 5, we've got 3 root 3, we've got 2 root 6, and we've got root 23. So without a calculator, it's really hard to tell which one of these is going to be the biggest and which one of these is going to be the smallest. So that's why we're going to put them all underneath root signs, because we know the square root of something like 28 is going to be more than the square root of 26. So if we're gonna write five as a square root, that's just gonna be root 25, because that's the equivalent of five. When we have three root three, we can rewrite that one um, as, if we have a number on the outside, when we put it back inside, that means we have to square it. So that's gonna be root 27, because that's three squared, which is nine times three. This two root six is gonna end up being root 24, and this root 23 is root 23. So if we're gonna order them from least to greatest, we have root 23, followed by root 24, which was two root six, followed by root 25, which was five, and then followed by three root three. So since we're dealing with functions in which there are variables in the radicands or underneath those root signs, we will often be asked to provide any restrictions on the variable. So a restriction tells us what values are allowed to be substituted in for your variable. And since we know that we cannot take the even root of a negative number, that means that any number that would give us a negative number underneath the root sign affects our restrictions. So for example, it says state the restrictions for the following expressions. The square root of x plus five. Well, we know that x plus five, whatever's underneath that root sign, um, cannot be negative, right? So it has to be greater than zero. It can be equal to zero, so I guess we could put that equal sign in there, but it can't be zero. So we just solve that little inequality and our restriction is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative five. Because we plug in anything um, greater than negative five, like a negative four, we will get a number that we can take the square root of, we'd get a one. 
if we plug in anything less than negative five, we're gonna get a negative number and we can't take the square root of that. So this is our restrictions on this um, binomial underneath the root sign. In this case, where we have one minus three X, I think your best bet is always to make an inequality, one minus three X, which is greater than or equal to zero. Um, if we're gonna manipulate this thing, we're gonna move the one over to the right hand side. That means negative three X is greater than or equal to one. And then we're gonna divide by negative three. And when we do that, we have to remember our, our rules for inequalities. When we divide by a negative number, we have to flip that sign. So X is, has to be less than or equal to uh, negative one over three. So radicals can be added or subtracted if and only if they are like radicals. For example, they need to have the same things in the radicand and the same variables outside the radicand. So always make sure you simplify your radical first, write it in mixed form, before you add or subtract radicals. Here's our example. It says add or subtract the following radicals if possible. Root 24 minus root 6. Well, right now these two things are not like radicals because they don't have the same number underneath the root sign but we can simplify root 24. That's the same thing as saying four times six. And so the square root of four is two, so we get two root six minus root six. So if we had two root sixes and we took one root six away, we just end up with one root six. In this case, again, we want to simplify first. So we're gonna take the square root of 20 x to the fifth power. That's four times five times x to the fourth times x. And that would then give us 2x squared on the outside, root 5x on the inside. And for our second one here, we can write 45 as 9 times 5. There's a perfect square, which is 9. And then x squared times x. So now when I take the square root of 9, I multiply it by what's out in front. And it's already a negative 3 in front, so that now becomes negative 27. I could take the square root of x squared, which is just x. So there was already x there as well, so now we're at x squared on the outside. And then underneath I get 5x. So because I have the same um, degree of exponent on the x squareds on the outside of the root, and I have the exact same thing on the underneath the root sign, these are considered like terms, and I can add or subtract them, which means a 2x squared minus 27x squared is going to be negative 25x squared root 5 so in summary, radicals can be written in mixed form, which is a simplified form, or as entire radicals. Each form has its merits and uses. Number two, a restriction on a variable tells you what values of x are allowed to be substituted into your radical equation. And to do that, remember we just let that thing underneath the root sign, and we know that thing has to be greater than or equal to zero. And radicals can only be added and subtracted if they are like radicals. So your assignment is on pages 278 to 281. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.